Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and today we are having a look at yet another fascinating piece of analytical equipment. This is what's known as a handheld refractometer, and this is used for determining the concentration of solids, such as sugar, or in this case, salt, in liquids. As the name implies, this is accomplished by measuring the liquid's index of refraction. That is the angle at which a beam of light bends as it passes from one medium into another. This is equivalent to the ratio between the speed of light in a vacuum to its speed in that medium. Refractive index is related to angles of refraction via what is known as Snell's Law. Snell's Law states that the ratio of the sines of the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction is equal to the ratio of the two medium's indices of refraction. In a refractometer, a thin film of the liquid to be tested is spread onto the surface of a measuring prism and a roughened translucent cover or illuminating prism placed over it. This allows light to enter the liquid prism interface at multiple angles. Past a certain angle of incidence, known as the critical angle, light would have to refract past an angle of 90 degrees. As this is impossible, it is instead bounced away via total internal reflection, the same phenomenon behind fiber optics. Below this angle, light is transmitted through the prism onto a reticle. As a result, part of the reticle will be illuminated and the other part in shadow. Now, since the sine of 90 degrees is 1, by reading the interface between the light and dark fields, the so-called shadow boundary, Snell's law can be simplified as follows, and the refractive index of the liquid, and by extension its solute concentration, specific gravity, and other related properties, directly read by a calibrated scale on the reticle. Modern refractometer was invented in 1869 by German physicist Ernst Abbe at the Carl Zeiss Optical Company in Jena. His design resembled a microscope with a prism assembly that could be rotated using a knob. The angle at which the shadow boundary lay exactly in the center of the field of view corresponded to the critical angle, which could be read off a vernier scale mounted to the instrument. Now, refractometer readings are affected by two major factors, temperature and the wavelength of light being used, the effects of which vary from material to material. Now, Abba's original refractometer used ordinary white light, but featured a set of Amici prisms that could be adjusted to account for the dispersion effects of having this polychromatic light source. Later models used a variety of filters or even sodium lamps to narrow down the wavelengths, whereas modern versions will use, again, filters or LEDs, which can produce very specific wavelengths. Now, in early ABBA refractometers, the effects of temperature were compensated for by immersing the prism holder in a water bath with a thermometer, which stabilized the temperature and could be monitored and compensated for. Later versions had a bimetallic strip that would automatically adjust the lenses and prisms according to temperature, whereas modern versions will often have a thermoelectric cooling and thermostat system in order to maintain the prism within a certain range of temperatures. The ABBA refractometer was followed in 1887 by the Pülfrich refractometer, invented by fellow Zeiss employee Karl Pülfrich. This featured a single 90-degree prism with a cylindrical container for the fluid sample, around which the magnifying eyepiece could be swung to find the critical angle. Another variation introduced by Zeiss in 1899 was the dipping refractometer designed to monitor chemical processes in factories. This could be dipped into small clear glass test tubes filled with sample liquid, an angled mirror being used to reflect light through the sample and into the instrument. And finally, there was the V-block refractometer, invented in 1941 by J.V. Hughes of Chance Brothers Limited and first marketed by the Fisher Scientific Company of Pittsburgh. This measured refractive index directly by passing a light through a slit and the resulting beam through the liquid and prism at a known angle, then measuring the angle of refraction. And all of that finally brings us to this device, which is known as a traditional handheld refractometer. Now, just like other models that we've looked at, this works by determining the critical angle of the light passing through the liquid sample. However, this does not require you to center the shadow boundary in the middle of the field of view. Rather, that boundary is projected onto a graduated reticle allowing you to use this at pretty much any angle, making it perfect for use in the field. Now, this is actually a very simple device. Up at the front, we have our measuring prism fitted with a filter to narrow down the measurement wavelength. Most refractometers use yellow light at around 589 nanometers, but this model uses a blue light filter, likely around 480 nanometers. Over this, we have a hinged illuminating flap, which, as you can see, has a roughened texture to allow light to enter at various angles. Behind this is a little adjustment screw that allows the refractometer to be calibrated. And if we unscrew the barrel, you can see that the screw is connected to the spring-loaded lens element that moves up and down to adjust where the light falls on the reticle. Now this is marked ATC, which stands for Automatic Temperature Compensation. 
Now, I haven't been able to determine this for certain, but I strongly suspect this spring here also expands and contracts with changes in temperature, adjusting the position of the lens accordingly. Farther back in the barrel is a reticle with the readout scale. As you can see, this is calibrated to read the salinity of water at 20 degrees Celsius, both in specific gravity, that is density relative to that of fresh water on the left, and percent salt saturation on the right. Specifically, this goes from fresh water at 0% salinity, specific gravity 1.000, to 100% saturated salt water, around 357 grams per liter, at a specific gravity of 1.070. And finally, at the very rear, we have an eyepiece that you can rotate to adjust focus. So to use this, you first have to calibrate it, and you do this by using an eyedropper, put a few drops of distilled water on the surface of the prism. You then close the illuminating cover, which spreads the liquid into a thin, even film. You then hold this up to a bright light and check to see if the shadow boundary falls on zero. If it doesn't, you take a small flathead screwdriver and turn the adjustment screw until it does. You are now ready to take your reading. So first you wipe off the distilled water from the prism and using the liquid you want to test, you repeat the entire procedure, minus of course the adjustment step. In this case, I mixed up a batch of 10% saturated salt water and sure enough, the refractometer gives me a reading of 10%, specific gravity 1.010. Now, another important thing to note is that you should use the same light source to both calibrate the instrument and take measurement, since, as the chart shows, the refractive index of salt water changes significantly with wavelength. Now, refractometers like this have many other applications outside of simply determining salt concentration for aquaria. For example, these are used in brewing, winemaking, and the making of preserves and honey for determining sugar content, which in the case of fermentation gives an indication of alcohol yield. Now, for these applications, there are a number of different scales used, including the Bricks, Plato, and Bolling scales, which are all based on the concentration of sucrose in water. For example, one degree Bricks is equivalent to one gram of sucrose dissolved in 100 grams of solution. Similarly, in the Uxla scale, one degree Uxla corresponds to a one gram difference between one liter of wine must and one liter of water. And finally, the Baumé scale is based on sodium chloride dissolved in water, with, for example, 15 degrees Baumé corresponding to 15 15% dissolved salt by mass. Refractometers are also used in medical diagnostics to determine the solute concentration of urine, blood plasma, and other bodily fluids, in industry to determine the concentration of coolants and other process fluids, and in gemology in order to determine the refractive index of various minerals, an important factor in identification. And in addition to simple handheld refractometers like this one or desktop manual refractometers, there are also various automatic models using charge couple devices or other sensors to automatically measure the critical angle. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Hope you found that interesting. I just recently came across this refractometer and given the fascinating science behind it, knew I had to cover it on the channel. Now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on another video or look at yet more instruments and other devices just like this. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.